is Luis. I'm a marathoner from Venezuela and I've been going to Kenya for the past almost 20 years. My first time in Kenya was in 2007 for the World Cross Country Championships in Mombasa, Kenya. It was an experience that opened my eyes and I saw how cross country, how running was so important for Kenyans. There was no joke, no exaggeration, a million spectators in the course of cross country and it was insane. When I went to Kenya and I saw that, I was like, okay, these people take running very seriously and I need to come back and train here and learn from these people. So that was in 2007, a long time ago. Then I had my time in college, I ran for the University of Kentucky, so I was there for four or five years. As soon as I graduated, I said, okay, now it's time to go back to Kenya. So the second time I went to Kenya was in 2015. And from there, I've been going basically every year, twice a year, and I stay, sometimes I stay a month, sometimes I stay a little bit longer, it depends. It's packed with people, not only Kenyans, but people from everywhere in the world. You can see Europeans going there to train. You can see people from the US, people from Latin America. There's athletes from everywhere in the world. The most thing that everybody has in common is that everybody is fast. So you can see people training really, really fast. In this video, we wanna talk about the locations in Iten. So basically from Monday to Sunday, we're doing easy runs, workouts, long runs, medium long runs, and we go to different locations in Iten, and we go to these different locations because there's a reason behind it. So for easy runs, we can run around town. Uh, there's plenty of roads that connect. People live around the town, and to go to their houses, there's dirt roads, and you, run, you can run through those dirt roads. So you can easily get, you know, 10k 20k around town of dirt roads and they're magnificent for running they're up and down they're rocky so they're not easy by any chance but they're pretty good for running and training there is great so let's talk a little bit about the tracks let's talk about eldoret track which is a tartan track so a real track it's not in the best conditions right now but it's good enough for training the pretty cool thing about this track is that you can see literally hundreds of athletes training there every day. When I say hundreds, I mean hundreds. Like it could be 100 people, it could be 200 people, it could be 300 people. And you can see world record holders, you can see Kipchoge there, you can see the best athletes of the best countries around the world training at that track and running really, really fast. Somehow, even though there's so many people in the track and some people that are really, really fast and then some people that are amateur runners training in the track, there's an harmony that makes it happen. Nobody ever fights, nobody gets in the way of anybody, they make it happen. There's just one rule, you stay in lane one and if you need to pass, you pass on the outside. So it doesn't matter how fast, how slow you are, you stay inside and then you pass on the outside. And people know that and then all the times I've been there, I've never seen any type of accidents, even though there's hundreds of people training. You can see athletes like Kipchoge, you can see athletes like Daniel Nacimientos from Brazil, the 204 guy. You can see literally anybody that you can imagine, the best athletes in the world will be there training, so it's pretty cool. The track is called uh, Kipchoge Keino. Uh, this is the name of obviously Ilu Kipchoge, but then Kip Keino, who was let's say the Kipchoge back in the day, so they share the name on the stadium. And it's, you know, 30, 40 minute drive from Iten, so very easy to get there, and it's open. You can just go in, you don't have to pay, it's literally open for everybody. You can use it whenever you want, and you can run really fast. I did a workout there, actually I've done a lot of workouts there, but some of my favorites uh, was doing 400s. Um, we started, I think, at around 67, brought it down to like 62, I wanna say, and it's smooth, it's a really good track. It reminds me of the track in uh, Colombia, in Paipa. It just bounces the same way, it feels the same, it's at the same altitude, so it reminds me a lot of that track, but this one is a lot more people running fast in there, so really good track, beautiful place to train in, still under construction, so it's not the most pretty looking, maybe, but it's, you know, you don't go there because it's pretty, you go there to run fast. So the second track that we use a lot is Tambach track. 
Tambach is a little town about 20 minutes outside of Iten. So Iten is here, Tambach is here. So you go from 2,600 meters of elevation down to 1,600, which is really good if you wanna do track workouts because you can run fast, there's more oxygen, you can feel better. So people really like going there. So this track will also have hundreds of athletes training. And when I say hundreds, I mean it. Hundreds of athletes of all ability levels. There's high school kids, there's professional runners. I mean, when we were there, Kiwi Walk Candy, who's the second fastest half marathoner in the world, it trains there. And it can get tricky because if it rains or if it's cold, it can get muddy, but they still get it done. I mean, you just have to do the workout with the track a little bit muddy, but they get it done and it's no problem at all. That track is probably the most beautiful track I've ever seen in my life or I have worked out in my life. It's beautiful, like the views of the Rift Valley, the views of the people running really fast. It's just a unique place, a beautiful place that I love sharing with the campers that I take to Kenya. It's just, I don't know, I don't have words to describe it, but I guess I hopefully this video can show enough to describe the beauty of this track. Not only it's beauty, but then you mix that beauty with hard work because we train really, really hard in Tambach. Because it's lower elevation, you can run faster, they take it very seriously and then they run really fast. I've done a lot of workouts there. The one I can think right now or I feel like my soul left my body for a little bit was 15 by 600 meters. Um, the thing is that when you get there, you do your warm up and then you're ready to start, but you don't know what the workout is. And then literally a minute before, the coach says, all right, we're doing 15 by 600 meters with one minute uh, recovery in between. We're like, all right, let's go, let's do it. And then you start running so fast. This was a group of about 15 people that started and only four or five of us finished the workout which means that it was very hard, very intense, because starting with 15, finishing with five, that means 10 people died in the workout, throughout the workout. So it was so good, I felt really good. It was very hard, I suffer, I struggle, but I got it done and then I feel so accomplished that I finished. Moy Ben Road. So Moy Ben is also a town that is about 20 kilometers from Iten. So you have to drive down a little bit and then there's a bus stop we stop there, we switch shoes, we do our warm-ups, we do whatever you have to do in order to begin. So it's a tarmac road, it's perfectly paved. Uh, if Kenya one, has one thing is that the roads are really good. Say 20 kilometers, I don't know the exact distance, but it's about 20 kilometers. The, it first, you go down and then when we switch, you have to come up. And there's you know some undulations on the road, so it makes it pretty tough, it makes it pretty good workout. It's not easy by any means, but it's definitely like a flattish road where you can roll and you can run really fast. So the most fun, hard, difficult runs that we've done there are long runs. I've done 25K, 30K, 35K at different paces, but usually we run really fast when we're there. So the same thing, I usually run with a big group of people and just right before they run, they say, okay, how far are you guys going? 35, 30, okay. And then they give us a range of paces. Usually, or the times I've been there has been between 315 and 325 per kilometer. This is about 510 to 520 per mile, something like that. So they say the first, 10 kilometers take it easy which is 320 per kilometer and then we just go from there so i ran as fast as three o's in the in those kilometers we're running and it's super fun for me it's one of the most challenging workouts because i kind of struggle a little bit with going the distance like if i'm running one hour it's fine but an hour 45 two hours i definitely struggle in a good way like if i struggle it's difficult for me but i get it done so I play this game in my head where it's like, stay with the group, don't lose contact. If you lose contact, you lose kind of thing. So I just stay there with them. And you know, because it's a big group, I try to stay in the middle where I don't want to be in the front because I don't want to be pushing the pace. I don't want to be in the back because it's like dangerous. If you like, if you're not thinking, then you can be off the group without even realizing it. So I like being in the middle staying there. It's kind of like Kipchoge when he did that sub two hour where he had people around. That's how I like doing it. I just stay there. I, I want to have one or two people in front. I want to have one or two people behind and then I just stay there. 
So we're clicking kilometers, clicking miles, 310s, 315s, 310s, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers. It's pretty hard. It gets really tough at the end, but it's so much fun. Like it's the Disney World for me. Like I love being there and working so hard. And then the Matatus, which are the vans that give us company, they give you the gels, they give you the water. So it's pretty cool to be able to like take drinks and all that throughout the run without having to worry too much about stopping or getting it. You can see uh, giraffes in the run. So to the right, there's like a giraffe park. So say you are running there super hard, working super hard, and then you look right and it's this beautiful giraffes walking and you're like, wow, like we're in Africa, I'm training with Africans, we're running really fast, we're working really hard and like this place is beautiful. So it's such a cool run. Moiben Road, definitely a place that you need to visit. Another good long run spot location that we have is Captuli Road. So Moiben goes to the right, Captuli goes to the left or the other way around. I'm not good with directions, but they go opposite. So Captuli is also a town that is on the way actually where Kipchoge lives. So if you keep running that way, you'll eventually see Kipchoge. I don't know, maybe. but. It's also a long road, I don't know exactly the mileage, and I think you can add kilometers here and there, because you could also go to Eldoret Town, which you don't want to go there because there's traffic, but these roads, there's not that much traffic around, and the people really respect the runners, so you'll see cars coming and going, but they always like move and like they stop, and the runner always have to ride away. So in Kenya, if you're driving, you'll see, if you're running, I guess, you'll see how the cars like really respect the runner, so it's pretty cool. This run, I think, is a little even flatter than um, Moiben Road. When you say flat in Kenya, it's not flat at all. It, you're gonna have undulations, it's gonna be pretty hard, it's gonna be pretty tough, but it's not as bad. It's probably the fastest place so if the group wants to do a fast long run a really fast long run they're probably going to choose Captuli Road instead of Moiben Road because they have a better chance of running fast because you're not gonna be climbing that much so if you go to Captuli you'll know that you're gonna run fast and the way you know they're gonna run fast is because they do a warm-up for the long run so if you think about it when we do long runs we usually don't warm up we just start running because you're gonna run 30k 35k whatever so you don't really want to do a warm-up because you're adding a lot of miles there so but here we do warm-up so we do about 5k warm-up three mile warm-up and then people do drills do some strides go to the bathroom there's a bathroom there and, and the bus stop which is really good because you can go to the bathroom and then start your run so if you do a warm-up that means you're running fast I did a workout there which was 25k and I want to say we averaged 317 per kilometer and that was one of the fastest long runs for me in Kenya because okay you gotta think we're at elevation we are not running in flat European sea level races you know you're in Africa you're running at elevation with like undulation it's pretty hard so running 317 for me was definitely a challenge but it was good it was fun and it was hard work this is also a really good road. I would say I like it better than my Ben just because you can run faster. But my Ben is really a really good run. Another workout that we do in that road is uh, we did it, I think it was 10 by three minutes with two minutes in, with the, in between. So it was basically 10 by 1K with two minutes easy in between. I did this workout with Rainbow and I mean and with the group but Rainbow was just pushing the pace I remember he was definitely you know Rainbow Barnaba Kid Coach he's just the fastest runner that I've met or that I've trained with and I say this he's a 208 marathoner but I say this because like every workout that I did with him he was just so comfortable so easy and always helping me and always being like let's go let's go so like I run with a lot of people and I see people like struggling too like we're all struggling but not him so it's pretty special and now we have a pretty cool bond and special connection and friendship and he's running really fast and hopefully he'll run even faster when you're not doing track workouts or long runs or medium long runs you're probably going to be doing fart legs around in 10. there's two fart legs the titan melee I don't know how to spell it, just call it Titan Milling or two tires, they call it sometimes, and then the Boston Fartley. They happen the same day at different locations at the same time. I don't know why, 
but that's how the way it works. I think it's, there's so many people running in E10 that you can have 100 people here and 100 people there. And then you also don't know what the workout is. The workout could be two by uh, two minutes on, one minute off, three on, one off, it could be anything. Boston Fartlek starts in a place where you're gonna be going downhill for a while, let's say 10, 15 minutes. So kind of like the Boston Marathon that starts on the downhill. So you feel good, but they're running really fast. So feel good, but at the same time, you're going so fast that it doesn't feel that good. And then it just starts climbing, just like the Boston Marathon, and that's why they call it the Boston Farley. So a lot of people that are training for Boston, they go to that Farley. It's around the town. It's around the dirt roads, around the roads that connect to other towns, but it's all dirt. And when it's dirt, it means it's gonna be up and down, and it's gonna be rocky. So very difficult terrain, but also very good to train. Um, so yeah, I did a workout at the Boston Farley that was the hardest one I've done, 3-1. And that means three minutes hard, one minute uh, easy. Three hard, one easy, like that. I think they went 15. No, maybe they went 12 and I went 10, 10 of them. So basically in my head is like 10 by 1K. It was so hard. And at eight, I was like having kind of trouble, but they saw me that I was there like struggling a little bit. They're like, come on, let's go, Luis. And I like went back to them and I stayed with them and I finished the 10 with them and it was so good. And they were like, you're doing really good. So it was like motivating to train with them and cause it's really hard. Like it's like very, a very, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, in the track, everything is measured. You know, the times here is just three minutes hard, one off, three hard, one off. And then in the one off, you have to catch up and then go again, so hard, but it's also so, so good. Then the other far leg, they do the tightening milling on the other side, the route, this one is crazier. It's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Really, really hard. And the workout can be the same. One on, one off, two on, one off, or three on, one off, who knows? It could be five on, one off. But whatever it is, it's gonna be so hard. And in your head, it's just like, First, don't go out too hard because they go out super fast. So you just kind of like stay behind a little bit at first and then catch up to the front if you can, of course, and then just go with it. Struggle, work hard, do whatever you need to do. For me, like it's all about breathing and recovering and clearing the lactic acid. Because say you run two minutes really hard going up. When you finish, your breathing is like super like fast, right? Your heart rate is through the roof. So in that one minute, you only have 60 seconds to recover, to go fast again. You have to say, all right, bring the breathing down, bring the heart rate down, clear the lactic acid. All right, let's go, let's go. But at the same time, you have to like, if you're back, you're gonna have to catch up with the front. So at the same time that you're recovering, you're not really recovering because you're trying to get to the front. So it's really hard, really complicated, but I always focus, all right, Breathing down, if you bring your breathing down, you'll bring your heart rate down, you'll feel relaxed, recover, and then you go. But when it's only 60 seconds, it's really hard and it's really tough, but you kind of have to do it if you want to stay there. So yeah, those are the fart legs. Those are around the roads everywhere in E10. And yeah, I think basically that covers the locations that we train in Kenya and why we do it and why we love it and why we keep going to Kenya to train there. It's just such a beautiful place with such beautiful people and I want everybody to go see it. And it's good, a lot more people are going to Kenya and bringing two camps a year, 15 people, 20 people, and I show them around. Not just the town and the places, but also the people. I, wanna, I want them to share with the community, to learn from them, and to help the community. Because when I bring people, they're also helping the economy. And it's not charity. We are actually working, and everybody else is working. And these people are bringing money that is gonna help Iten, the people, and the economy of Kenya. So yeah, if you guys are ever wanna come to Kenya with me, uh, my website is runningmecca.com. We do two camps, one in the spring, one in the fall. So just check it out. Maybe the dates will work for you. And text me, send me an email, write to me on Instagram or on YouTube, and we can connect and make it happen. I've been taking people now. I think this next camp is gonna be the fifth camp I do in Kenya. So it's beautiful and so far so great. I also do camps in Colombia and in Boulder, Colorado. So we have three camps going on right now a year. So. Yeah, just connect with me and anything that you need, I'm always here to help.